get the aerosols, I'm talking about the solar radiation management, how do we get the aerosols into the stratosphere? There's no way to do it today. Ideas of artillery or balloons or airplanes need a lot of research. Uh, Ken said it would be easy and cheap, but there's no demonstration of that. It might not be that expensive, but th such equipment just doesn't exist today. So This is out to Mr. Alan Rovach, saying that we don't have technology to put aerosols in the air. The magical planes. Yeah, this is 1950s through the 70s technology development and now look. So don't let Mr. Robach mislead you. Yeah. That's geoengineering. Yeah, May 14th, full salt. <sighs> they are seriously at it today. San Diego County. Ramona They've been working north of us now they're working down here They are working real hard See that mr. Robach That's some pretty neat technology there I was talking to Rosalind Peterson last night and she found a picture from 1959. Back when you guys were just experimenting. Fairly more expensive than coal carbon, sequ carbon capture and sequestration. E educate me. Is it or is it not more expensive? And if so, why or why not? I think it's crucial to distinguish these two completely different kinds of things. Carbon removal is inherently expensive. We can disagree about exactly how much, but it's expensive. Putting sulfates in the aerosol is potentially so cheap that costs are irrelevant. In the same sense as when you think about security strategy, that actual cost of nuclear warheads is not a big driver in security strategy. Costs are so cheap that the richest people on the planet could perhaps afford to buy an ice age. That individual small states could act alone. So essentially, that doesn't mean you should do it, but it means that this will be a risk to How risk would you decision. That? Educate us on that. Pardon? How would you, you know, you're saying it's so cheap. What is it makes it so cheap? Uh, the, the underlying physical fact that it's so cheap is that a couple of grams of sulfur in the stratosphere offsets a ton of CO2 in the atmosphere, not in terms of all the environmental effects, but in terms of the crude radiative forcing. So I'm working with one of the leading uh, uh, contractors of high altitude aircraft in the U.S., Aurora Flight Sciences. We're in the middle of a contract they have with us looking at the costs of doing this, and the costs are, as we thought, small. These costs would you add are, it to the fuel, or would it... No, 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 that doesn't work at all. That's the, in the blogosphere. No, you'd build, you'd build custom aircraft that would fly at about 65, 75,000 feet. that would put the appropriate sulfur, or whatever it is, in the atmosphere. And the costs of doing that really work out to be low enough that costs don't matter. We're talking about a cost to offset the entire effect of double CO2 that's of order of just billions a year. So that's a thousand, a hundred to a thousand times cheaper. Look, when you say cost. when yeah. you say offset the entire effects of CO2. Yeah. In, in, in terms of gross rate of forcing, as I've said and we've all said, it can't solve all the problems. Only on the radiant side. Yeah. This would have, my guess, I may be wrong, would have no impact on ocean acidification. None at all. Okay, and I think it's really important to understand that. Absolutely. So, so this is inherently imperfect. It can't compensate for CO2 in the air completely, but it can provide an extraordinarily fast-acting thing. And this business of it being cheap, I think, is pretty much a fact. And it's not, it, this isn't necessarily a good thing. The downside is it allows unilateral action. Mm -hmm. How long does it last up there? The lifetimes are years. What? Years? A couple years. And then it, what, precipitates it, out? It, or? Yeah, that's correct. 
No toxic uh, side effects that we know of? The thing we always wonder about is the unknown unknown. Yeah. So if you're thinking about, say, the acidification, it's clear that's not a problem in several studies that showed that. Right. But of course the concern here is with so little research, there may be some unknown unknown that comes out of left field that bites us. There may you put that, the lens of your I've, I've tried doing that. <laughs> I've, I've taken a few. Yeah, and they're really at it today. Unbelievable. Ominous clouds everywhere that they're making. Now we're starting to get the, the haze out. It was really clear yesterday. You could see Mount Woodson like it was just right there in front of your face. And they're just everywhere. There's one right there. Wish I had that other camera. Is this LCD screen? It's just a lover. So there's one there, two, we just three, four, five, six, everything. <laughs> we make clouds now. These are man-made structures. But there's definitely particulate matter in the atmosphere. We're breathing in. And I don't particularly like it. Well, this is what we're breathing, folks. Atmospheric loaded debris. Get outside with your flashlight. You can't see it during the day except for out in the distance and you see the haze. Geoengineering? The application of sulfur into the atmosphere is a weapon of mass destruction.